What's going on you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here and welcome back to another article review. Oh, this one I'm excited about. I'm also a tad nervous about it because a lot of people really like this Resident Evil game because it's just, it's it's a classic. It's purely a classic. Oh, please no one send hate to me like they did with Fallout 3. <laughs> like seriously, Fallout 3 was a benchmark for how many people disliked an opinion that I have. An opinion. Today was a no makeup kind of day. I'm going to be doing a facial after this video. So I'm just like, eh, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go on camera without makeup, shall we? So the world is her ant hill. In Resident Evil Code Veronica X, we go into the game where this basically queen ant, queen bee, queen bug. Now the story and universe of Resident Evil is a very in-depth one. It's very vibrant. It's filled with multi-layered characters, monsters, plot twists, and several games that cover each character in depth. They do it in an organic way that's not forced either, which I really like. Now Code Veronica, however, it focuses on the story of Alexia and Alfred Ashford, with also previous characters from previous games embedded within this entire story, may launch, however you want to put it. The characters that we also see in this game are Wesker, Claire Redfield, and her brother Chris Redfield, the OG. Now this Resident Evil game was surprising for me in many ways because of how disappointing the controls were. I mean seriously, they were really disappointing and you guys know I have a really big bone to pick with disappointing controls. It was also surprising in the fact that it was a really immersive storyline and the camera angles and transitions were actually well done for a game that was made back in 2000. A lot happened in this installment. A lot happened for the first time in a Resident Evil game. I was actually surprised. Like legitimately surprised at the ending. So let's go into some character development, shall we? When it comes to Claire Redfield, our girl, besides Jill, she's our girl. She is determined, she is strong, she is a competent young woman that puts her brother first before everything. To see that kind of friendship and relationship in a Resident Evil game makes it come to life more and it makes it more relatable in a sense too. I mean, you know, she she's there for her brother. She puts her brother before everything. She's always searching for her brother, which I mean, you know, I don't know if any other Resident Evil buffs out there like myself are just like, oh yeah, no, she's totally always searching for her brother. And in this game, when you first go into it, you assume the role of Claire who has been locked up. Now Claire was discovered by the Umbrella Security Forces and eventually imprisoned sometime after the moments that she was in jail for, that's when she found out about the outbreak of the T-virus. Now, continuing on in the game, Claire meets up with Steve Burnside, and he's, he, he's a good character. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he he's good for what he could have been, but I feel like he needs to be flushed out a little bit more. I understood him to be more of like the bratty emo kid that always wanted his way, but never got it. And then, oh, you know, surprise, surprise. He's actually a softie that Claire's about, that, that Claire's about, <laughs> that Claire's about Claire. He's actually a softie that cares about Claire to a really deep extent. And it was really wholesome and cheesy to see. Ugh, my feels. The fact that his character was killed off really doesn't surprise me all that much and it was a choice that made a lot of people happy because a lot of people really didn't like the character of Steve Burnside. And since this game was created in the year 2000, the emotions came across cheesy, underdeveloped in both meaning and the way it was just portrayed in general. I mean seriously, the way he just goes, Claire, I, 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 I love you. Like come on, give me a break, seriously. After a while you assume the role of Chris. And this is where it gets interesting. And you go through his perspective and you are thrown into the story even more so. And I think it was such a smart idea to do this from dual perspectives. Make it so that you're seeing it from his perspective, his side, which much like in Resident Evil 3 and Resident Evil 0, you're getting it from a dual perspective, which I think is really, really cool. A lot of people didn't like Resident Evil 0. It was one of my favorite titles in the Resident Evil franchise. And it works really well. Like the fact that you can go back and forth. Well, okay, but not like Resident Evil 0 where you can literally press a control and go back and forth, but you have to go back and forth between characters in this game in order to get the entire arc of the story. It creates an immersive atmosphere that brings the player in and the game becomes more multifaceted and textured instead of something that's just from one perspective from one character. After playing as Chris for a hot minute, you then assume briefly, very, very briefly, the role of Claire once again. This is where you have to find Steve and in an emotional scene that pulls at your heartstrings and fills your oo-woos with pride and joy, you see how Chris finishes off the game after you assume his role again. Now, spoiler, Wesker makes a few guest appearances, which I won't tell you guys because if you guys have not played the game, you, you're going to want to see this because in the game Code Veronica, there, there are two versions. There's Code Veronica and there's Code Veronica X. In the first version, you don't get like extended cuts of certain cutscenes and everything like that. But in the version Code Veronica X, you do. 
So this is where you get to see more of Wesker's, <laughs> more of Wesker's character back in the good old days, and you get to see more of Chris and more of Claire. So I really think that it's it's really prevalent that you guys get Code Veronica X, the extended cut, rather than just the normal Code Veronica my opinion. At the end of it all, Big Brother is there to save the day, and Claire can walk away unscathed physically. Emotionally, that's something else entirely. But literally, controls can make or break this game experience for you. Literally. I I've never had, besides Fallout 3, I've never had such crappy controls. So and You know, I'm terrible at playing video games. <laughs> like, like, I never claimed to be really good at playing video games, honestly. I never claimed to be good at playing video games. But one thing's for sure, you know bad controls when you see them. This had terrible control work. Even though it was based on tank controls, which is the primary source of controls for back in like the 90s and early 2000s, it was terrible control work. Going into this game, the controls are something you really need to be aware of. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Since this game is under classic tank controls, it's completely different from modern controls, where tank controls are mainly utilizing the D-pad to control your character instead of other means. Now, I even have to look at the definition of this again because with tank controls, it was kind of confusing, but here's a definition for you guys, just in case you want like a refresher on what they are. <laughs> Thunder outside is getting growly. The game with tank controls, player controls the movements relative to the position of the player character. Pressing up on a game controller means that the character in the direction they face down reverses them and left and right rotates them, much like a tank machine, <laughs> which the character has to stop immediately before turning for a different direction, much like, again, a tank. Tank controls are actually really common back in the 90s and early 2000s, such as games as Grim Fandango, Tomb Raider, and early Resident Evil games, as we know. The camera angles, however, are actually good. Like, I was legitimately surprised at how good the camera angles were. Sometimes they would be fixed, sometimes they would follow the movements of the character themselves, but most of the time, like, they were spot on. Like, there, I only have, like, maybe two or three instances where the camera angles actually, like, messed up and kind of, like, you know, did a, wibble, a wibbly wobbly kind of thing. But other than that, I was really surprised at them, and they looked rather cinematic for the time. Be that as it may, this game, keep in mind, is a remake in 2011. <laughs> remake, okay. From the game that came out in 2000 for the PS1, I believe. So th it's really interesting to see what qualifies as a remake in 2011, okay? <laughs> I was in college in 2011. You had really good games coming out. Now, controlling Chris and Claire was challenging enough as it is. When you get into the boss battles, predicting the movements of the boss in time, trying to like get each attack, timing that as well, it gets challenging. It became an issue, and to revert back to my mention of the controls, the tank controls make battling enemies very clumsy and unpredictable. And it's really something that every time you play, you you don't have predictability or stability with any character movements, okay? Enemy attacks are something else entirely. You don't have predictability of that. You don't even have predictability of how the gun will stabilize when you're shooting at an enemy or whatever it may be. It's really a luck of the draw. You don't know how it will lock onto the enemy or target, if it will glitch, will my movement align with the gun and the enemy making it easier to shoot them. There's a lot of things you have to take into consideration with older tank style control games like these. Looking at current games now, they coincide with how the game actually functions. So it's both even, if that makes sense. So you're, you know, you're, you're having an evil playing field. So let's go into my final thoughts, conclusion on all of this. I really enjoyed it. Like with everything that said, I'm really happy. I'm finally being able to play Code Veronica X. I could never before. I played a little bit of it, not on my own system, but whenever I was at my niece's house back in the day, back in the days of the 2000s that were early, I played this very, very briefly on my niece's house and in her, like her PlayStation, I believe. I think that was the only console it was avail available for at the time. I could be wrong, but Nonetheless, I got to play like the beginning part of the game and I remembered that and I was like, oh, memories. I dove into this knowing what I would be getting myself into. I didn't realize quite how much of a headache I would get, but it, it was, you know, it was, it was a pretty big headache. With all of the struggles, with all of this experience, shall we say, seeing the game in the classic style, seeing this game, even though, like I said, it's a remake from 2011, but still, seeing the game in the classic style, seeing the spooky atmosphere, the Resident Evil, like, classicness that it, oh my god, I was just, I was thrown back 
into the way back and it made me so freaking happy. Even the classic voiceovers and creepy vibe that the game had it will forever be a place that is held in the Resident Evil Hall of Fame. Forever. Needless to say, this game deserves a remake, and as my first playthrough of this game in particular, it made me unsure for the first time whether or not I would actually be able to complete a Resident Evil game. Like, I mean, for the first time, it was actually, this is this game kind of rough. Am I going to be able to complete this? Excuse you, Thunder. I'm trying to do a video here, sir. Thank you. Like I said, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to complete this video game because I literally was having issues with the controls. But as my stubborn self, I persisted and came through victorious as usual. Every game is conquerable. Every single game is conquerable. It just depends on how badly you want to beat the game. It just depends on how badly you want to succeed at completing it. But if you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below because I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and double uploads on Friday. And as usual, stay casually nerdy. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Thank you.